two types of fundamentals. Fundamentals in terms of buy goes up, sell goes down. Fundamentals in terms of news, other types of economic data. You do not want to get into the game of predicting Hercules. So I'm talking about fundamentals in their purest form, buying and selling. Don't think of this, let me say that in a better way. Hercules is not a predictor. What the researchers found was that it wasn't A causes B. It's that B likely follows A. And there's a world of difference. All right? how many of us know what causes pregnancy? <laughs> Everybody in the room, hopefully. <laughs> you do have to be over 18, so. No, I'm not going there with it. But it's, it, there's A causes B, right? We know what causes it. It's not that pregnancy is likely caused by something or it might be caused by something. That's the difference. But we live in a world of certainty, meaning we see something happen, she gets pregnant. We know that. So because we live in that world of A causes B, it's, it's, and I'm going to keep saying it, and it's why I'm going to keep saying it. We've just got to keep it in mind as you're watching the screen, and even when we start getting into some of uh, Cecil's indicators, while they're very powerful, it's not that A causes B. The squiggly line isn't really pushing the market up. Okay? Let's go on to page number nine. What the researchers backed up is people are predictable. And I would say even more so traders. Traders are very predictable. So why does this work on a short-term basis? Well, when you're talking about the other guy, the trader, Wyckoff called him the composite man. When you put the market all to it together into one person, you could kind of project him out there uh, as a guy. What is he doing? Well, that guy, the reason why they call him the smart money and they use all those terms, maybe not because they're really so smart, but because they just have more money and more people listen to them. Uh, I'm forgetting the name of the firm. What was the firm when they speak? E.F. Hutton. And it was true. I mean, E.F. Hutton had a lot of money. They had a lot of control. They had a lot of power. So they're the smart money now. Last I looked, yeah, Futton wasn't in business anymore, weren't they? <laughs> so the smart money can be wrong. And that's why we're talking about small slices, small slices in time. OK, so as we're monitoring the market and we're looking what's going on, what, remember, Hercules is not going to help you predict the market. It will tell you what has happened. Now, that may not seem like it's very important. The reason why here it is is because the math has been proven, like I said, that B likely follows A, okay? So when I say that they, they missed the real lesson, it was if buyers are coming in and the market's moving up, and then we see that graph drop down to next to nothing, that literally means the buyers have left the market. Now, the reason why that becomes a good time to act is because there's a lull. The market hates a vacuum. So if there aren't any orders coming in, what could that likely mean? So we've got the other guy who's the market, the smart money, the E.F. Huttons of the world, George Soros and all those guys banded together, and they've been pushing the market. Well, what happens when they go away? What happens when IBM and Dell and all these multinational conglomerates stop Moving money. Well, guys like me get to be in control. And my only job is to eat the other guy's lunch. That's it. And we do that by mucking around with the market, faking them out, calling them up, giving them fake orders, lying. <laughs> Not quite cheating and stealing, but that follows, right? Yeah, I mean, we would do anything we could. I mean, Niederhofer was famous for <clears throat> having 10 people on phones specifically to call trading firms to give them fake orders. 10 people in his full-time employee to do that. 
Now, granted, they would sometimes actually execute orders, but the, the, why would he do that? He would do that to eat the other guy's lunch because you're going to make some quick money because he knew he was dealing directly with one bank, and when you're trading directly against somebody else, the person with more information typically wins out, right? If you go to a car dealer, if they have better information, they're going to win. In other words, they knew that the engine was blown when it came in. And he tells you, oh, yeah, one owner, little old lady from Tupelo, great car. He just happens to know that when she was bringing it in, she forgot to change the oil for you know, three years, and the engine died on his doorstep. He has better information. So what Hercules is going to show you is what happens when guys like me are running the market. And you'll find that that's most of the time. You know, we've heard that market trends very little. Well, it's because the other guy, when he makes his bet, it's a big bet. When ConAgra comes in to buy wheat, they don't buy 10,000 bushels. You know, they need half a million. So they come in, they need them bought, they need them bought right now. And then the trader's head is on the chopping block. So what you're seeing with Cecil's indicators are the way to capitalize on that in a very mechanical way. How do I know that that is likely to happen? What, this is going to sh what Hercules is going to show you is how to do that in a small way. How can you tell when there's a transition from the other guy to this guy, to the traders? Because when the traders are in control, there's a lot of opportunity, meaning often. Because most of the time, you'll find the traders are actually running the show. It's the, the, when the big money comes in, that's when you've got the extended move. Okay, everybody get that? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to page 10. Now, if you look there at the bottom of the graph, or I'm sorry, the bottom image there, labeled decision support, everybody see that? Okay, you'll notice price is moving up and all the lines are pointing down. Now, I put the arrow on there for perspective. The net effect, even though there's general weakness with that currency pair, what you'll find is there are, there are a lot of smoke and mirror operations in the market. Okay, so if George Soros wants to sell a lot of pounds, he's not just going to come into the market and sell pounds. He's going to sell some, and he'll buy some. And the thing when you look at the way traders are taught to operate in the market, they're taught to use deception. And uh, it actually is quite a bit like some, uh, how many of you ever read Sun Tzu or heard of Sun Tzu? The Art of War, more familiar with that? OK. We, Sun Tzu talked a lot about tactics and deceiving the enemy and tricking him and ways to get him off balance. That's trading. If you need to build a big position, you can't afford to just lay your hand on the table. Say, guys, you know, I, I just need to buy 500 million pounds. You know, will you help me out? Traders don't wake up in the morning and say, how can I help you make a fortune today? <laughs> Remember the fish, you know, they see the other fish bleeding in the other pond, and they swim over there, and they flop on the ground and jump in there, and rah, 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 they jump on them, OK? Yeah, they don't wake up in the morning saying, Gosh, how can I make George a billionaire? That's my only mission in life, is to make George another billion dollars. So what George Soros would have Niederhofer do, or Niederhofer actually would often do for him, would be to sell other currency pairs. Now this is, this is totally foreign to most retail investors. You know, we would never think of selling something else because we want to buy something. But that's simply because our positions aren't big enough. But in the market, what they'll do is they'll actually go out to maybe four or five currency pairs. They, they may give a trader $10 million. They know that they're going to lose or have a high certainty that they're going to lose. So their risk might be $10 million because they're going to come over here and buy something else. And they want everybody else looking over there. It's just like a pickpocket. A pickpocket can't take your watch if you're sitting there like this looking at your watch, or with your hand on your watch, or with your hand on your wallet. But if he taps you on your shoulder, bumps into you, and you're stumbling around, there goes the wallet, right? We've all seen the TV shows. 